Alright, hi guys, welcome back to another video. Okay, we're going to be covering on soil profiles today. Okay, so this is another part of your physical geography syllabus. And um, it's actually part 11 of our current lecture series. Okay, so soil profile basically comprises of uh, your physical and chemical writing topics. Again, okay, it can be a bit complicated. Okay, so we're going to go through it um, step by step. Okay, firstly, you need to understand what are the four main soil, soil forming processes. Okay, you have got one, translocation. And then after that, you have got your eluviation. You have got eluviation and leaching. Okay, see, these are the four main components. Okay, whereby translocation is basically the movement of dissolved minerals, uh, dissolved materials, okay, from one horizon to another. Eluviation is basically when these particles are held in suspension, um, are being washed away. Okay, so eluviation with an I, okay, is when particles, uh, when pa particles are actually deposited, okay, when they are uh accumulated and lastly leaching okay is basically the complete removal of soluble components of your soil column okay so when if when i use the word leaching it comes in the term of uh leaching away of minerals so translocation in this case is more of an action okay your min your materials translocate from one horizon to another okay so there's three main p uh, pedogenic processes okay firstly you have got lateralization Okay, lateralization basically occurs more in the humid tropics. Okay, it forms this thing called laterites, which are basically oxide minerals. Okay, um, so lateralization actually requires a huge amount of water. Then next, you have got calcification. Calcification tends to occur in your BSH, okay, or if not your savanna climates, okay, whereby it's not exactly very wet, but it's not as dry as a desert. Okay, here, so here is where your alkene, um, uh, alkaline soils, okay, um, as well as your calcretes are being formed. Okay, and lastly, you have got salinization. So salinization is basically a more intense version of um, calcification. Okay, so we'll go through um, in depth in terms of the different horizons for each one of this after this, okay? Okay, firstly, humid tropics, okay, they go undergo this process of lateralization. So you need to understand um, this, okay, yeah, if not lateralization. Okay, Lateralization, basically what it is, okay, um, you have to explain this topic based on the different horizons, okay? So when you're going by different horizons, firstly, you have got your O horizon, you have got the A horizon, you have got your B and your C, okay, as well as your R. Your R tends to be your unweathered material. Okay, when you're looking at your O horizon, okay, for the humid tropics, like when, when you're looking at lateralization, okay, there is actually no O horizon. Okay, so the reason why there's no O, o horizon okay, is because the decayed matter, okay, O horizon basically refers to all your decayed matter. Okay, decayed matter is basically being used up over here, okay, by um, all your flora and fauna, okay, and then also the, um, um, what actually happens is that it tends to decompose very quickly to form this thing called hummus. Okay, as a result, this forms hummus in the A horizon. So A horizon is where there is um, the presence of fertile soil, okay, things like your hummus. Hummus is basically um, kind of like a fertilizer, okay, it's, um, it comprises of your decomposed uh, materials. So in your A horizon, okay, there will be a thin A horizon, okay, you need to understand which layers are thick, which layers are thin, okay, so there is a very, very thin A horizon, okay, and the reason why is because your hummus is actually being used up very quickly by your fertile soil, so because of the huge amount of um, flora and fauna, okay, in a humid tropic, okay, this will actually cause the hummus to be used up very quickly as a form of fertilizer. Okay, moreover, okay, there's actually an abundance of moisture, right, in your humid tropics, hence leaching will occur. So leaching, if you recall, okay, leaching is basically where there is the, uh, where, where your minerals are being taken away, it's where your minerals are being leached. So the minerals from A horizon will actually be eluviated and translocated into B horizon, Hence, resulting in a thicker horizon. So, notice how I use the words over here, eluviated and translocated. Okay, which is why, okay, your B horizon is actually known as the zone of eluviation. So, I, uh, so it's actually known as the zone of eluviation as seen over here. Okay, whereby it's actually a very, very thick B horizon. Okay, because all your minerals are being leached away from your A horizon and translocated into your B horizon. So, as a result, okay, um, uh, there's a lot of accumulation of these oxide minerals and these oxide minerals are actually iron rich and they are known as the laterites. So that is where your main word over here comes from, right? Laterization. So these laterites are actually reddish in color because of the oxide uh, minerals that are present. <coughs> okay. Okay. okay, then lastly you have got your sea horizon. So your sea horizon is basically a very, very thick sea horizon. 
Okay, whereby in the tropics when there's the presence of high rainfall, okay, there's actually deep chemical weathering. Okay, so if you want, you can refer to this thing called the Strakhov's diagram. Okay, whereby there is actually deep chemical weathering that occurs. Okay, because of intense percolation and infiltration. Okay, as a result, there is an increased amount of weathering. Okay, deep chemical weathering. Hence, this would produce sepulite and regolith in the sea horizon. Hence, you have a very, very thick sea horizon as seen over here. Okay, so that is for humid tropics. Okay, now when you look at the savannah or the tropical steppes, okay, when you look at this, um, these two regions, oops, sorry, there's actually the process of calcification. So calcification, okay, we're going, we're going to go by horizon again. Okay, so old horizon, if you remember, okay, is all your decayed material, right? So there is no old horizon to begin with, okay, because of a lack of flora and fauna. Okay, that's actually a very, very bad line. Okay, let's remove that. Okay, because of the lack of flora and fauna. Okay, since there's constantly high temperatures, there's no rainfall. So it does not actually help in forming um, any flora and fauna. Okay, and then as for your A horizon, it's actually slightly thick. Okay, the reason why okay, is because of the presence of occasional flora and fauna which die and decompose. So for instance, there will be a few times whereby you have got some little plants which grow, then they die. Um, when they decompose, it actually forms hummus as, um, as similar to your... Uh, tropical rainforests or your other um, humid tropics. Okay, so your A horizon is very, very thin, okay, but it's slightly thicker in relation to your B and C horizon as well as your O horizon. Okay, so your B horizon is actually thinner. Okay, and my reason for this is because, once again, you look at Strakhov's diagram. So Strakhov's diagram looks something like this. Okay, whereby the top part okay, is rainfall. The top part here is rainfall. Okay, and the bottom part is actually your weathering. Okay, so basically what I'm trying to say is it mirrors the effect. Okay, so where where your your um desert are is actually somewhere on here. So there's actually a little gap over here. So this part over here, okay, is where your chemical weathering actually takes place and it's actually very, very shallow. Okay, this is the reason why is because of your low precipitation. Okay, so there's very little water which infiltrates, but over time, Okay, more and more water will infiltrate and build up, okay, and that will cause increased weathering at your sea horizon, which we'll look at later. Okay, so over here, as, as you see, I've seen I've written, okay, what actually happens is that because on the surface, because it's extremely hot, right, so as we have learned before, there's extremely high physical weathering. So when it actually rains, okay, during the occasional wet seasons, let's say due to trade winds or due to random monsoons, for instance, okay, the alkali dust that is in the, uh, in the, in the air, okay, is actually brought down to the B horizon, and so as the water infiltrates and percolates, okay, what actually happens is that over a prolonged period of time, they will start to settle in the B horizon, forming this thing called cliche. Okay, they are basically called, uh, your calcretes. Okay, and not only that, okay, during um, the dry season, okay, there's also upward movement of water, okay, because the um, dry season um, will actually push the water up, okay, push more moisture to the surface, okay, as well as for your little flora and fauna that needs the water. So this is called capillary action. Okay, what happens is that all this um, capillary action will actually also deposit this thing called calcretes, which is basically a hardened white layer. Okay, so for your sea horizon, like I've mentioned, okay, it's actually very, very thin. Okay, because of the absence of deep chemical weathering, okay, um, the, the, the actual case is that more of the soil and, and all the dirt, uh, your regolith is actually weathered um, chemically at a lower level. Okay, as a result, the the soils over here tend to be very, very dry. So dry soils, we no normally term it as azonal soils. Okay, salinization okay, is basically a more extreme version of calcification. Okay, under extreme dry conditions, okay, what actually happens is that groundwater is brought even further up to the surface via capillary action. Okay, so evaporation will actually leave. Okay, over here I meant to write salt. Don't mind this over here. Salt. Okay, salt deposits K and calcium carbonate in the top, top layer. So this will call, cause this thing to form called a hard pan. Okay, it's basically your calcium deposits, your calcium carbonate deposits. Okay, it also results in this thing called a solonet soil, which is basically this, um, the entire area. So all the soil is called solonets, but within the soil, okay, you have got all these layers of hard pan, which is basically the calcium carbonate. So it's kind of like the mineral term for it. Okay, and so the general term for this entire area is called pedocalus. Okay, you don't have to know this term. Okay, just know the slow nets and as well as that capillary action takes place. Okay, so all in all, right, for this topic, it's actually very, very simple. Your exam requirements, you just need to understand the three different processes of lateralization. 
calcification and your selenization, which is basically the more extreme version of calcification. Okay, it tends to be a 12 mark question, okay, which basically requires you to explain all your different horizons. So go and understand your different horizons, okay, so that you can use um, your different processes to substantiate. Okay, so this topic usually will come in conjunction with your physical and uh, chemical weathering as well. Okay, so if not, that's all for this video, okay? um, I went through basically roughly how you should be writing your essay. Okay, so your essay should basically to go horizon by horizon, okay, one by one. Okay, and then if not, that should be all for this topic. Okay, the next video, I will most likely cover cast, um, as well as following that will be alien. Okay, cast will most likely be a two-part series, okay, that will be going through the landforms as well as the processes. Okay, so if you did enjoy this video, okay, do make sure to give it a thumbs up. Okay, as well as to subscribe uh, to the channel, okay, because it really does um, help me out over here. Um, if not, you can leave your comments down below if you've got any questions, and I'll be sure to answer them. Okay, so if not, till then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.